Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast. It's now a time where we discuss the events that happened, shaped the world, and especially Nigeria, today in history. On the 18th of January in 1948, what happened was that uh, the foundation students, 104 foundation students, who began their courses at Ibadan, the college university Ibadan, started on 18 January 1948. Now, at the time of its establishment, what we know as the University of Ibadan today was the University College Ibadan. Students were awarded degrees of the University of London. They had an affiliation with that university, but it made it the first degree awarding institution in Nigeria. As I said earlier, the origins of that school are in the University of London, established 1948. And uh, the University of London at that time, you know, supervised its academic degrees and awarded uh, programs until 1967. Staff and students from the Yaba Higher College were transferred to the University College Ibadan. That's the form of that university. But it became the University of Ibadan, the school, the institution we all know it to be today in the year 1963. Uh, the oldest degree awarding institution in Nigeria. And University of Ibadan, which we all know as UI, yes. is made up of 92 academic departments organized into 17 faculties. And uh, we know notable University of Ibadan alumni uh, to include Wale Shrenka, Chinua Achebe, and uh, the uh, environmental and political activist Ken Saro Wiwa. Now let's just quickly address the, the uh, myth surrounding the University of Ibadan and University of Nigeria, Unsuka. You know, yes, students debating which is the first university in Nigeria. The facts are, like I said earlier, is that the University of Ibadan at first was a college, a college university uh, attached or affiliated to the University of London. But the University of Nigeria on Suka UNN was established by the federal government in 1955. It's the first indigenous university in Nigeria located in Nsuka and Ugu State. It was modeled you know, on the American educational system and all of that. But the fact remains that UNN is the first indigenous you know, Nigerian university. university. But the University of Ibadan, even though it was established many years uh, before, was in University College Ibadan. I'm sure a lot of people still wish that there was still the affiliation with the University of London um, if you go to UI, but right. <laughs> not anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. And also, um, you know, there's, of course, the sad part for me when we talk about Nigerian universities in the 60s, um, and that is, you know, the effect that the war had on um, these universities, the University of Nigeria and Suka and um, UI and the rest of them that um, basically had to be shut down and almost didn't exist in those three years. And then, of course, after the war, you know, there was now a, a, a bridging of certain, you know, colleges to make, you know, one or two, I think University of Calabar, I can't remember. Um, but there's that, you know, perspective that, I'm, you know, I'm never you know, excited about when I read back in those, um, about those years. Yeah, such dark times. Indeed. Anyway, uh, moving up, you know, a couple of years after, we're moving from Nigeria now to um, New South Wales, and that is in Australia. Uh, we're going to be talking about what happened in 1977. It is um, termed the worst rail disaster in Australian history. It led to the death of 83 people and about 213 were injured. Um, also affected about 1,300 persons. Um, it's uh, once again the worst rail disaster in Australian history. It was a crowded commuter train that derailed, uh, running into the support of an old bridge um, very close to the Granville uh, Rail Station. Um, the bridge, of course, then collapsed on top the train and you know everything that was beneath it leading to the death of 83 people eventually one more person was added to that list in 2017 and that was an unborn baby uh, the train was heading from sydney to mount victoria and derailed just as it approached uh, the grandview rail station some of the carriages separated and of course collided with the supports at the base of the bridge um, which of course led to the collapse of the bridge along with the cars that were on top of the bridge at that time. It was 570 tons of bridge metal and concrete and every other um, you know, item that was made to construct the bridge, but 570 tons of all of that that collapsed on top, you know, some of the carriages of the train and led to the death of those 83 people. Um, and maybe that's maybe the, the sad part of the story. It's not the fact that the train derailed. Um, it's the fact that some people may have survived 
um, the derailment. It is just because, of course, they hit the base of a bridge and then the bridge collapsed right on top of those persons um, and led to the death of those people. The train driver and the assistant crewman survived. The people who were on top of the bridge in their cars, um, a lot of them also survived. The motors on top of the cars also um, uh, survived. Um, of course, the investigations that were carried out you know, in that period also showed that it was a poor fastening of the rail tracks that led to the collapse of the bridge. Yeah. Um, so yes, 1977, 83 people lost their lives today Sad. in uh, Australia, New South Wales, or, um, Wales and Australia. And many years later, it's sad to see the statistics about how trains kill about one person yes. every 100 minutes. Yes. But yes, that's where we draw the curtains here on uh, Today in History. We will now take a break to bring back Libora Sashama, who is in the studio to discuss the Kano elections over the weekend and the issue of underage voting. Do stay with us on The Breakfast. <laughs> 